Welcome to ForexTV.com. Today is Wednesday, November 19th. I'm Kathleen Reddington with your New York Forex Market Buzz. The Japanese yen comes back and gains on the euro and the U.S. dollar. And now for a look at the latest headlines from the CEP News Desk. U.S. housing starts fell less than expected in October to 791,000, representing a month-over-month -month decrease of 4.5%. The drop pushes the number of starts to its lowest level on record, which dates back to 1964. The seasonally adjusted U.S. CPI saw a full percentage point drop in the All Items Index for October, falling by the largest mar margin on record dating back to 1947. Core inflation fell 1.1 percent against an expectations of a 0.1 percent gain. This fall in the core rate marks the first negative monthly print since 1982. As retail gas prices fall, U.S. drivers continue to stay off the road. Gasoline demand fell 2.2 percent year-over-year in the week ending for, of November 14. Crude supplies climbed 1.6 million barrels to 313.5 million barrels. Inventories were forecast to climb 1 million barrels for the week. Today we are joined by David Watt of RBC Capital Markets. Hi, David. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? All right, the dollar was down across the board this morning. We're seeing record lows in inflation. Oil is slumping, and we're awaiting word on an auto, bail, auto bailout. Uh, it seems that the dollar rally lost some steam, especially after yesterday when people were saying uh, they were very bullish on the dollar. What's your dollar strategy for today? Uh, well, to an extent, uh, it is linked into what's going on with equity markets. Like the U.S. dollar is still uh, seen largely as one of the single safe havens. Like you, the economic data you indicated clearly shows that the U.S. economy continues to remain under intense pressure, but uh, you can almost sort of take U.S. and put almost any other country in there, and the story is pretty much the same. And We're still seeing the U.S. dollar trading as a somewhat of a safe haven. What we've sort of seen is as equity markets have been probing their, their lows, uh, we've seen the U.S. dollar rally lose some steam. So what we're basically looking for now is if equity markets manage to uh, hold off going back through to their to new lows, uh, and possibly have a bit of a relief rally, we could see the U.S. dollar begin to come back a little bit. But again, it's like uh, we're in like uh, we're in a U.S. dollar bull market, so I think anything, any sort of pullback in U.S. dollar is going to be temporary, and we're just setting up the stage for uh, a break from technical and fundamental side of uh, from on a DXY basis of 88. All right, and now the dollar's kind of counterpart in this, the Japanese yen. Uh Fell this morning, but it did. It didn't appear that there was less risk, risk aversion going around. Just kind of a slump, as we've been seeing more negative economic reports. But the yen did gain uh, some of its ground back today uh, on lowered equities. What is your strategy going forward for the yen? Uh, again, it's a similar sort of aspect to uh, to one of the factors that's been driving the U.S. dollar, and that is the what the risk aversion background and the fact that we're going to continue to see. Uh, risk aversion continuing to remain elevated, and as a result of that, we're going to see, as with re repatriation flow to the U.S., uh, ongoing off, ongoing unwinding of uh, yen borrowing in, over the past several years. And people basically going back and unwinding the, those strategies, like whether it's carry trade or just uh, funding themselves in, in yen for uh, general purposes. Uh, we're, it's something that we're going to continue to see going forward, and as a result of that, we think that the yen will. Uh, continue to uh, to strengthen overall, but uh, you know we we do have also in the background there uh, that uh, you know there have been talk about intervention, like the the G7 statement, which basically indicated that although there probably is not going to be any coordinated move, uh, if we start seeing yen strength, the uh, Bank of Japan certainly seems to have uh, the G7 backing to essentially intervene on its own. So to an extent, that's going to be a restraining impact on on any sort of do on any rally in the Japanese yen, but again, this is given the background background and uh, the, the unwinding of, uh, of risk-based trades, uh, if we get this break in equities to a new low and, from, and the S&P 500, we are going to continue to see unwinding of those risk positions. So we are going to be having a period of people continuing to buy yen, and there's, there's a possibility of a test of uh, the Bank of Japan's resolve. Like, are they going to be able to stand up uh, effectively enough to prevent uh, this buying of the yen? Uh, affecting the, the level of the yen. So th that's going to be something that we'll watch going forward. But again, uh, given the backdrop of global growth, the risk backdrop, we still continue to see reasons for uh, the, the Japanese yen to strengthen. All right, now the euro had made some gains this morning, but it's pretty much erased those. Uh, what was driving the euro this morning, and uh, what is your strategy for euro? Well, 
I, again, like the, the euro is basically trading almost uh, right off what the what the U.S. dollar is doing. And when it looked like uh, earlier this morning that U.S. equities were going to be doing relatively well, uh, we started to see the euro strengthen to an extent. And when U.S. equity markets turned south, uh, that completely reversed itself. Uh, again, we, we, we sort of see the euro uh, continuing to, to weaken overall. But uh, even from the technical side here, we're looking at you know, 125. Like uh, the euro got down to 125. And it is basically stalled there. That's consistent with what we've seen in the U.S. dollar. And, and again, the market is looking for uh, the next direction. Is it going to be the euro basically heading back to, say, 130, 135 on a short-term basis? Or are we going to linger at 125 and then eventually break break down? And again, that gets into, again, that story on what's going on in general with the U.S. dollar and equity markets. So if equity markets have a bit of a bounce, uh, I think we could see uh, the euro heading back to 130, 135. But if equity markets uh, don't get that bounce, and we do take out the lows, uh, going through 125 and then heading back, to, uh, heading down eventually, maybe not in the near term, but over the next several months, uh, into the teens. Now, is it the same deal for the pound? Because we did see the pound rebound today as well uh, for the first time in a while. But is it the same same news driving the pound? I know we had the Bank of England come out and make some statements today. Yeah, it, it, it depends. Like a, a lot of this domestic stuff right now is almost noise. Like it, it, it seems odd to say that, but you know, you look at the British pound and it's basically been flirting right around that 150 level. So you know, we've got a number of currencies that are sort of sitting at, uh, at fairly important levels and we're just waiting to see the next leg. And I, I think you know, the backdrop still remains one where uh, we think equity markets are going to, have, uh, are going to, s- to struggle. The U.S. dollar is going to remain in a bull market and currencies like the pound and, and the euro are going to continue to weaken. And on top of that, you, you, as you indicated, the uh, more rate cuts coming, not just in uh, the UK, but also in uh, the Eurozone and potentially quite aggressive ones in the next uh, several months. So, you know, again, that just leaves this backdrop of uh, looking at uh, dollar pound or, say, as British pound rallies as opportunities to sell, and we're going to be testing uh, the lows that we hit uh, late last week. All right, David, thank you for being on the show today. All right, you're welcome. This has been your New York Forex Market Buzz with David Watt of RBC Capital Markets. I'm Kathleen Reddington. Join us later this afternoon, 4 p.m. exchange, right here on ForexTV.com.